more people will watch it. Uh, but just to introduce our program, just for you, uh, Doug, uh, we are uh, in the School of Liberal Arts, so we're building off of the Motorsports Engineering Program. So it's over in the School of Science. We're over in IU, so they're in Purdue, we're in IU. Uh, so the idea is we're supposed to benefit a lot of their successes. Um, so uh, the School of Liberal Arts, we've got history, economics, geography, uh, writing, so we're trying to incorporate some of those aspects to motorsport. Uh, I also like to add a little bit of the business part. Now, there is a business and motorsport class, but it's really not a business and motorsport program more than be on that course. So that's why I, I like having business people. I like pe having people who actually run an operation uh, also speak to our students. And so as we'll go through, don't, you know, you, I'll definitely be asking questions as well to kind of also streamline to the interests that we have. Uh, but just in general, we're just all things related to motorsport with one key aspect being learning about new forms of motorsport. And there's no doubt, RC is for us, could be a new form of motorsport. So go for it. Okay, great, well thank you. <clears throat> thank you Vincent for asking about talking guys. Um, just to brief a little bit on my background, who I am, where I came from, I'm, I'm, this is my hometown, I grew up in Indianapolis. Um, I went to uh, high school here and then after that went to the military and after that came back, went to IU down in Bloomington and I got a degree finance. Back then it was before the Kelly School of Business. Um, but anyway, so that's what got me started. From there I went to work with the, in a bank in St. Louis, Missouri. I uh, worked there for about 10 years and uh, got into the trust department, which got involved in the investing, which is why I, I really loved. That was my, my background. I bought a piece of um, land when I was in the service. Um, I bought a piece of land out by Geist Reservoir. And then I got called away and went to Italy for three years. <clears throat> I came back and found out that my land had tripled in value. I thought, man, that was awesome. I made a lot of money and I didn't do anything. I made a lot of money actually. And uh, so I thought, man, if I knew what I was doing, I really, I could be good at this. I could be dangerous. I could be really good at this. So I wanted to go to business school and learn about finance investing. So again, in St. Louis, uh, that's what I did. I worked as a research analyst um, following the transportation sector, the automotive sector. Um, I would tell our portfolio managers when they should buy a General Motors stock or sell General Motors stock or Ford or Chrysler or Federal Mobile or Dane or Eaton or anybody could take Cummins in. Um, and so I did that and I we did okay. Um, uh, Merrill Lynch from New York City called me up and said hey we'd like you to come work for us. Do the same thing just do it for us. Um, so once a lifetime chance, financial world, capital, financial world, I got to make it over, right? So we, 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 me and my wife, um, we made a little bet. My daughter was on her way, as our first child was on her way, but I left her in St. Louis. I went to New York, got signed up, and got going, got started, and then eventually got her up there. So I worked with Merrill Lynch in New York City for 13 years. We lived over in Princeton, um, in New Jersey, and rode the train back and forth every day to work. Uh, but it was a great experience, a tremendous experience. Um, had a lot of success, made a lot of money. And um, came home and bought some land, and again, and built a shopping center on it. And um, my mother and, and uh, sister wanted to have a party store, so I funded them and built them a party store. And then my older brother, who was the mechanic of the family, he wanted to have a, a hobby store, a slot car racing store. And when we were kids, we used to go slot car racing. Back then, that's what we could afford. Uh, couldn't afford remote control cars. Um, but wait, I did that for him, so he opened up the store. Um, so I worked in New York for, oh, until, again, until I was 45 years old, I came home. I worked there 13 years, I made a lot of money, I came home and basically to retire. Um, I wanted my kids, my daughter was getting ready to start high school, I wanted her to be in one place to see high school with the family around. We've been the black sheep of the family, we were gone for such a long time. Uh, but the chance to get to know their grandparents and go to school and hopefully go to IU like I did, like my wife did too, by the way, that's where I met her. Um, so that's again, just a brief background where I came from. I'm, I'm really not a mechanic, I'm not good at that. I'm a, I guess I'm, an account, I'm a bean counter. I'm, I'm pretty good at P&Ls. Uh, I'm pretty good at the stock. That's where I think I actually excel. Uh, but nonetheless, I kind of got drawn into this hobby or this business. My brother who wanted the slot car business found out that it was hard work. Um, it wasn't going over well for me. He wasn't successful at it. Uh, he, he lost quite a bit of money that I had funded up front. Um, he was out of inventory. He wasn't paying rent. You know, 
He basically, I, when I came home uh, to retire and help out, help out um, the store was was bankrupt. It was done. Um, so I sat there with him for a couple months, watched what was going on, and then had some suggestions. Uh, we got to clean this place up. We got to paint that. We got to fix this. We got to inventory. You know, and. Uh, he, he didn't agree and he left. And so here I was stuck with something I know nothing about. Uh, so, but I learned. Um, I, I hired one of the guys that was there on the spot and he was the manager and I was the employee. I was the janitor. And so we cleaned it up, painted it up, made it go of it again, and it worked. Uh, we started making money and doing well. And we've been doing this now, or NDRC or Indy Slots used to be called, now it's NDRC. Um, We've been around for, I think we're on our 14th or 15th year now. Um, a lot of race-related RC car shops, or even slot car shops, they don't last very long. They last three or four years, and they kind of come and go, come and go, come and go. But we're kind of proud of the fact that we've been around a long time. We, we kind of think it's more because of our business model, the way we approach things, versus just trying to just race cars. Um, we really do try to hit the family side of the business. Um, like in any hobby, or in, even in motorsports, I suspect that you know the high end of the market. Um, there is a high end of the market, uh, very affluent, very, very good, but not really very friendly. Um, got guys that you know they've got their secrets. They want to keep their secrets. They're going to beat you tonight and this weekend on the track, so they don't want to share their secrets. Well, we do. We share. We encourage our guys to participate and share and help each other. Um, we're more towards, I guess, the lower end of the market. Make it affordable, make it fun. Um, don't get too serious. Again, remember, these are, in our case, these are toy cars. Uh, <laughs> these aren't, you're not gonna win the keys of the Camaro at the end of the week, you know? Mm. So we have to remind our guys sometimes about that. Time to try to get them to cool down sometimes. They get a little aggressive, a little uh, competitive. Um, but again, we're not really catering to the high end of the market. And, and that's what tends to happen when people get into this business. They, two or three of the racers, We'll decide. Let's let's build our own track. Let's, let's buy a building or rent a building. Let's go outside and tear up a yard, and make a track, and and we'll be in business and we'll we'll make lots of money. Um, that's not the way it works. It's those guys typically are, are high end. They're they're not family friendly. They're not. They don't help encourage yeah. people up. They're they're kind of a click group, and they're sometimes they're abrasive. And if you're not good in the click group, then you're just not part of it. And, Hmm. And then things just kind of cave in and fall and go away. So, but we've we've been able to get to be around for quite a while. Um, but anyway, that being said, um, we just have a lot of fun with it. Again, it's uh, our guys. Um, I think everything that that they know or see or hear about racing can apply to what we do, just on a smaller scale. Um, our guys, they have to work on their cars. Um, we have stock classes where you must run this kind of motor, this kind of tire, this kind of body. And instead of calling it stock, we almost like want to call it cost controlled. We don't want the guy with the biggest paycheck, the biggest money, having the best battery, the best motor, the best tire. Every week there's always a new, bigger, better, better, meaner, faster, quicker. And it's just a money game. And you know, there's a reason why Roger Pinsky wins every weekend, because he's Roger Pinsky, he's got the money. But again, we have a lot of stock classes where Again, it's cost controlled, keep it fun, keep it simple. Um, and that's kind of, again, where we seem to have most of our success. At the same time, we'll have an open class where you can do anything. Um, again, we can, I brought this Indy car, I get a little show and tell, just to give you an idea of some of the kinds of cars in class we, but we, that we have, but we have a lot. We've got NASCAR, uh, oval racing, road, road, road racing. We do a lot of trucks and buggies as well, jumps, and maybe you can see that yeah, video a little bit, yeah. and how you'll see the guys going over the jumps. Um, but the idea, at least in my perspective, was to keep the cost down, to keep it fun, not to get seriously competitive. A car like this, for example, uh, with the radio ready to run, may cost two, $250 with a pretty good fast motor. Um, but it would be easy to turn this into a $1,000 car, even a $1,500 car. Hmm. Oh, you, Oh yeah, I've sunk in like seven hundred fifty thousand in one truck before. Without even trying hard, it's yeah. easy to do. You know, I mean, this is a plastic right. chassis. This could be carbon fiber chassis. Um, Jeez. It could. Um, we could have instead of the plastic parts here, we could have titanium or aluminum. Um, instead of a regular battery, we could have a lithium polymer battery that has a an extra boost potential. Instead of a brushed motor, we could have a brushless motor with no friction, therefore spins about twice as fast as a normal electric motor. 
So if we wanted this car to go 100 miles an hour, it would not be hard to do it today in today's technology. Um, but this car out of the box, if someone were to buy it and just put it together and play with it, this car is probably a 30 to 35 mile an hour car, which is plenty fast. Particularly in our location, our building where we race these, we don't have 200 feet long straightaways. We could never use all the power or speed that some of these higher end cars develop. So this is plenty fast. This is fast enough to to get you going. It's, you, you get a, a rush out of it. Um, hmm. But again, there's opportunities. Everything can be improved and expanded upon. But like I said, we have open classes where they do do that, where they spend a lot of money and they go racing and they take it very serious. And then we have a lot of classes where they're just fun. Um, and so we try to balance it. Every night we have a different kind of race, um, different kind of car, different kind of track. We change our track layout constantly, uh, hmm. two or three times a week. Thursday night's oval night. Friday night's road racing night. Saturday night's road racing with jumps. We go off road racing. Huh. Um, Sunday is all day practice day, so all the new people get a chance to come in and just play, just have fun, just practice, yeah. learn how to race. So, huh. um, and we, it, you know, as running a business, um, we try to really support what we race. So our our hours of business, our hours of operation, we're not like a regular hobby store. We don't open at ten in the morning and close at five at night. We do just the opposite. We open at five p.m. We wait till yeah. most of you guys are out of school. Yeah. Uh, we wait till the guys are off work. You know, kids are out of school. They come. They open at five. A couple hours of practice. We start racing at seven o'clock. We're done by ten o'clock, and we go home. Huh. Um, Saturdays, we'll actually have two races. We'll run a, an on-road car race and an off-road truck race. Uh, cars in the afternoon, trucks at night, um, and it just keeps it lively. I mean, it keeps it kind of fresh. If you find, you know, if there's a part of the racing or cars that you like, rally cars or buggies or stadium trucks or this torque series truck was becoming really big for us. Um, we've got a time and a place for that. So um, We've even kind of taken away from some of the other businesses like the health clubs. You know, the health clubs you pay a monthly fee and you're a member and come hmm. in and use the facility 24 hours a day. Well, we kind of do that too. Well, we wanted to keep the cost down for families, particularly for families. We institute a monthly membership program where the first family member was going to pay $39.99, they're unlimited racing, unlimited practice. Come in any time they want and race it as much as you want, as many, two or three classes a night if you want to. Second family member was $29.99, third family member was $19.99. Um, and that's been real successful for us. Um, it's, we don't build our credit card every month whether they come or not. We make sure that you know they want to be there that month before mm. we take their money for that. But, uh, but that's worked out real well for us and it's got, they keep coming back and now they start buying parts. It's kind of funny with the internet business as a retailer and versus the internet, um, the margins on these two or three hundred dollar cars aren't very good when you buy them out of box ready to run or even as a kit. You can buy those on the internet all day long. Um, and so there's just not much margin there. Uh, the, the, the online people obviously don't have the overhead that we have. These are almost, we sell these for a tiny profit, maybe five percent. Uh, two hundred dollar car we might make uh, yeah. <laughs> he might make twenty dollars on it after paying the credit card company and things like that. Huh. Um, where we make our money is on the part sales. When they break something, that's where we can double huh. the price and, and yeah. do well. So we want them to race. We really want them to. We encourage everybody to race. Huh. And also, again, that's the fun part. A lot of people are kind of intimidated by it. Um, a lot of people just love racing. You know, we, we, one of our little slogans we used one time was, uh, "You know, everybody loved NASCAR." So, you know. If you ever want to own a NASCAR team and just couldn't afford it, <laughs> now you can. Come to NDRC and, and you can buy your NASCAR yeah. and you can have your old team and, and you can race it and work on it and paint it and, and just just live life like Roger Penske <laughs> on a small okay. scale. <laughs> so uh, that's what we've done. And again, it seemed, the formula seems to have worked. I mean, like I say, we've been around for a while. Um, we've got great turnouts. Our business is very seasonal. Um, Maybe it's a little bit like bowling in the winter months when it's cold outside. They want to. They're not out cutting the grass. They're not on vacation. They love to come inside. In the summertime, our business can drop 50 percent from the peak to the trough. Um, and uh, again, alternatives: kids are on vacation, guys mm -hmm. are cutting the grass, or a lot of our customers are out playing with their real race cars. Um, huh. A lot of our guys have race cars or drag cars or. The, the winter to this is their passion and this is what they do in the winter just to have fun staying around the, the, the you know the racing community um, there have been many times we, we've had celebrities come through that um, just pop in Dana, one of the funniest ones was Danny Granger 
the oh, yeah. basketball. Yeah. Thing. I mean, really? Oh yeah. This this was great. My, my, my son was a basketball fan, so one day Danny Granger comes in, and he's really into it. He wants to buy a truck and go racing, and he did. And so here's this six foot eight, six seven, whatever, black man. And, and when we have races, we have people that stand around the track to marshal the cars. So they crash, the marshals try to straighten them out and get them going and turn them back over. And so here's Danny Granger, and here's this little bitty white boy, <laughs> a little kid, that's, they're standing together helping get these cars. And they, uh, how unusual this yeah. is. What a, what a neat hobby this is. Mm. These two strange, different people, characters, could you know, stand, stand side, side by side and, uh, and have a good time. But it's just, it's just it's the funny stuff. But, um, Sarah Fisher's been over several times. It's not that she raced, but her dad used to race with us. Mm. So she would come in to see her dad. Um, Tony Stewart, normally he normally comes to visit us once or twice a year, normally during the week between Christmas and New Year's when he would come in to look at things and buy things. Mm. One time he came in, he bought uh, six trucks, these little 18 scale trucks. They're normally about the Jones? No, well, the, the Mini T. It was before oh, the Oh, okay. Yeah. This, this is probably going back five or six years at least. Yeah, I had Mini T. He bought six of them, one of each color. And I, and I think, you know, I mean, Tony, why are you buying six trucks? I mean, you don't need six trucks. And he goes, oh, it's it's for me and the guy, the, the pit crew guys. This is when we got downtime. Huh. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna play them. And you know, he's walking around. He's, I don't want to give me one of those really, really fast motors. He says, well, that Tony, that wouldn't be fair because you're gonna have the hot rod motor. And the other guys. <laughs> and he goes, you know, I, I, I've been known for doing worse. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> so, um, but it, again, so there's a lot of you know a lot of interesting people. Uh, but it's just even the regular, I guess the regular guys that kind of keep us in business enough. Hmm. Um, so that's what we do. And it's been, let's say it's been a fun thing. Sometimes it gets a little demanding, um, the hours. Um, today's a great example. I mean, our, we did, we just opened at five o'clock this evening. Uh, I was down there at 10 o'clock this morning, finishing an order with one of our distributors, then taking in order shipments that I'd ordered yesterday that came in today. Uh, pricing those orders, put them up on the shelves, clean it up, get ready for tonight's race. So I didn't leave there until about 3.30 and I ran home and cleaned up before I came here. No, I don't have, I don't have class. All, I can do all that for you. Uh, well, I'm, I, I, I need something like that. I need some right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, it's amazing the things that go on behind the scenes so that when the 5 o'clock door opens, the lights come out, it's showtime. It's mm -hmm. time, you know, you're in the entertainment business and, mm -hmm. and that's what it's about. I mean, these guys are coming in, they want that track ready, they want it want that floor back and want to clean, they want to get high high traction on that track, and <clears throat> they want to start racing at seven o'clock. So hmm. um, but it's it's a it, it's 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 still fun. It's a, it's not a, a big money making business per se. Like I say we have a lot of competition on the internet and, and other forms of other hobbies. Um, um, again other races. Um, but like I say it's, with the seasonality it's like you you really do really well in the winter. Hopefully that gets you through the summer, and then you're off to another year. So, hmm. but anyway, that's kind of my story. What we do, what we're all about. So. Great. I believe you answered all the questions uh, I have. So oh, did I? I? <laughs> besides, <laughs> no, besides one of them, um, I just wanted to kind of uh, ask you where do you see the RC industry industry in like ten years? With I know Traxxas is making a lot of big, um, yeah. uh, uh, what is it called? Technology advances with you know they just came out with the. XEO one, which is a, it's a hundred miles an hour out of the box, and that's about like seven hundred dollar car or so. And then they just made a, um, it's called an X Max, and it's huge. Uh -huh. It's like the biggest monster truck you can buy. Huh. Um, all electric too. Yeah, all electric. And um, so where, yeah, where do you see? Well, the, let me let me give you just go back. Let's go back three years and then we'll go forward. Three years ago, things were totally different. Totally, it's amazing what's happened the last three years. Um, Three things that, that I could think of that just to change the face of the RC industry. Number one were the motors. Again, used to we had just a normal electric motor where we had um, motor brushes that touched the armature of the motor and the electricity was transferred through. Those brushes are made out of carbon and they would wear down as the motor spun. Those motors would spin 20,000, 23, 25,000 RPM. Um, yeah. And when they wore out, you just replaced them with new brushes or you just bought a new motor. Well, now we have brushless motors. So no longer do you have these, these, these motor brushes, these carbon brushes um, wearing out. So the motors don't wear out. And with the absence of friction, the motor spins even faster. Hmm. So our, our average speeds have gone from, you know, from brush motors to brushless motors. Again, like I say, used to a car would run 30, 35 miles an hour out of the box. Now some of them run 50 to 60 miles an hour out of the box without any 
upgrades, and, and that's what Vince was talking about. That there's upgrades to get to 100 like that. So motors have changed a lot. Batteries have changed a lot. We've got, we're in our third generation of battery now. We've gone from nickel cadmium to nickel metal hydride, and now we're on lithium polymer. Um, the, the, the lipos, <laughs> the lipo batteries are um, amazingly powerful. Um, they're totally different from what most folks are used to. A normal battery. It's dangerous too. They're dangerous too. Exactly. There's goods and bads, right? There's good every technology. There's something good and something bad. But they don't get hot, which is great. But Normal battery, battery, if you graph the power over time, you'd see a curve that the battery gets weaker the longer you use it, right? Well, LiPos don't do that. LiPos hold their power. They stay constant. The um, best example I can give you in real life is your cell phone. Your, 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 cell, your battery in your cell phone is a LiPo. And when you're talking, if, if you had a little flashlight and with an alkaline battery, a nickel metal, nickel cadmium recharging battery, same thing, you turn on that flashlight, over time that light gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. If you had one of those kinds of batteries in your cell phone, presumption is that you talk on the phone, the more you talk, the voices will get softer and softer and softer and go away. But they don't. Your battery stays up and the voices stay bright and clear. You get a little warning, hey, you're, you're getting low on battery. Then all of a sudden, if you don't do anything, then your cell phone just stops. It cuts off. Well, the idea of that technology, you've got to have some remaining electricity in the battery to be able to recharge it. That's why it just cuts off. Your, your cell phone is watching that battery continuously. It sees it drop down to around three volts. It says, all right, stop, stop here. Don't go lower, because if you go lower, I can't recharge it. Um, well, the same thing in our cars and trucks now. We've adopted that technology. So when people drive our cars, we've got a, our trucks, we need to tell them that, you know, if you're in nickel metal hydride mode, you've got to make sure your car understands that and is, is let your battery run down to zero. But if you go to LiPo mode, you've got to make sure that your car understands that and will cut it off when it's time to cut it off. Um, but the, the, the fun part is a racer's perspective. Again, let's, let's say we get a, we grab this performance or power over time. Let's say on the first lap we're dead even. You've got a lipo battery and I've got a nickel metal hydride battery. Well, on lap number 10, my nickel metal hydride has gone down in power. But your lipo has stayed up. So on lap number 10, you could be a second faster than me. On lap number 20, you could be two seconds faster than me. On lap number 30, you're three seconds. So you're, as a racer, you love that that nice level. You, your 30th lap is as fast as your first lap. Um, eventually, my battery may last longer, but our race is only going to be, for example, in this case, let's say five minutes. So 30 laps will be easy. Um, you'll perform the same. Your last lap could be just as fast as your first. Presumably, your last lap will be better than your first lap because you've now got some experience on the track. Whereas mine is definitely going to be lower. So the racers love. Um, not only do they hold their power, they don't get hot, you can recharge them or refill them faster because they don't get hot, but there are some hazards. Um, you guys, I'm sure, have all seen the videos this past Christmas where everyone's got the hoverboard and all of a sudden it catches on fire. That's a lipo. <laughs> Lipos are very dangerous. The chemicals inside, um, if you cut one open and expose it to the air, it'll go off like a flare. Just the chemicals interacting with hmm. the air. Typical battery, you cut it open, you get battery acid drips off and get your hand, just kind of wash it off, you're fine. But lipos, uh -uh. They burn. Uh, hmm. So good bet. But they recommend charging inside of an airtight bag and things like that. And, and now, in fact, we've gone from encasing them in aluminum foil. Now they're all encased in hard plastic and sealed, so they can't just bust open. Because we do abuse them pretty bad. We're throwing our cars in the, against trees and rocks. And, hmm. So, uh, but it can get exciting. So anyway, but lipo battery, battery technology is improved. The motor technology is improved. And the final thing, again, is really important from my perspective, is the radio technology. Um, used to, we were all in the AM frequency band. We had six channels available to us, uh, one through six, color-coded, red, red, brown, blue, black, green, orange, yellow. Um, and then we got the FM band, which was great, because we had 30 channels on the FM band, channels number 60 through channel 90, which was great. But every time we had a race at our, our place, we had to impound everybody's radio. If you walk through the front door, we needed to get your radio, we'd put a piece of tape on it, write your name on it, and we'd hold your radio. We couldn't let you work on your car with your radio in the pits while the other guys behind us were trying to race. We thought there would be interference. You'd get on the same frequency, the same crystals mm. that they would have. Mm. Well, the cell phone. Again, we stole that, that 2.4 gigahertz spread spectrum technology. Now we've now incorporated that to all of our radios. So now a, a radio to power the cars is just like your cell phone. It, it's channel surfs over 900 different channels, finds one, binds in, blocks it. Blocks in and then blocks in back to getting on that. 
So now there's no more radio impact. It's wonderful, fabulous. Mm. You can work in your car, and there's 20 people behind you racing, and there's no chance of interference, and it just it works. It's it's amazing. So mm. those three things, uh, the last three years in batteries, motors, and radios, it just it's wonderful. The price has been coming down as well. So now the cost of a lipo battery is almost the same as a nickel metal hydride battery, maybe two or three dollars more for the same size of capacity battery. Uh, the radios, they're now giving these this great radio technology now when you buy a ready to run car, even in a cheapo radio, they've got that technology built into it. Um, so you should see now the fancy digital radios that can do even more than that. Um, but it's really, uh, it's made the hobby, the cars are going faster, they're, 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 they're running better, there's less interference. Um, it's just, it's a pretty neat thing. So, long answer to your question. Next ten years from now, I don't know. I, what I mean, I'm mm -hmm. in heaven already. <laughs> Things have been great. Um, mm -hmm. But right, I mean, uh, the reason I ask is because I mean, I came in when all that was already done. Yeah, I, I see was like, out of, out of nowhere. It's yeah, we're <laughs> so it's carbon fiber, making everything carbon fiber. What else can you do? Well, it's really it's getting. It's, it's, I'm just amazed on the technology side. Like, so we've we've kind of cherry picked from again from cell phones and that technology and. Uh, again, the battery technology, uh, it's these, you get these LiPo batteries, um, the normal, the normal battery for an RC car is it used to be a, a six cell, 7.2 volt nickel metal hydride, and they're the size of a C battery, and you put six of them together, 1.2 volts per cell, so six of them with 7.2 volts, voltage is power. That was the stand, that was the normal battery. Well, these new LiPos, instead of six cells, they're actually, they're two cells, and they're long, skinny cells. Physically, they have almost the same di dimensions as the other six C-size batteries put together, um, but they have a little bit more power, 7.4 volts. But, but that's not the end of it, though. Well, what's happened is that these LiPo batteries, now they're making three-cell LiPos instead of just the two cells. So the three-cell LiPo bumps the voltage up from mm. 7.4 to 11.1. They make a four cell LiPo that bumps it up to 14.4 volts. Um, that's how we go 100 miles an hour in these electric cars now. But then you can add two batteries, you know, and, and you, have, I mean, you have to make sure you have ESCs and that's like what? Can handle the voltage, like yeah. Like 28, 28, uh, 28 uh, volts or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But you have to look at the KV rating and what uh, the KV means, it says like KV rating would be like 3,000, so it's 3,000, uh, RPMs for one volt, and so if you have 24 volts times 3,000, that's how many revolutions that motor is going to go huh. for a brushless at least. Yeah, it's and just, I mean, it is, it's crazy. And it does. It gets so crazy that the cars are out of control. That uh, <laughs> three years ago, people walked through the door, they wanted to buy a car. How do you make it? How do you make it faster? I got to know. I got to know. And we talk about gearing and things like that. You know, gear ratios and pinion wow. spurs and tire size. Now, I promise you, I swear, there's not a week go by that someone comes, doesn't come to our front door and say, you know what? This car's too fast. My kids can't drive. They're hitting everything in the river. They ran into the curb. They're into the tree. They're into the mailbox. Uh, they're into me. You know, uh, how do I slow them down? I mean, they're they're just yeah. literally too fast. Um, we heard, I got look at this. I gave this one gas. It spun the tire completely off the rim. I mean, it, the, they're so amazingly quick now. By far, by easy, electric powered today's technology can outrun gasoline powered or nitro powered in a heartbeat. Um, you know, it takes a, 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 a nitro, or we call it gasoline oil mix engines, it takes a little while to spool up. These electric cars, you hit the throttle and boom, they're gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just they seem to just torque right up real quick. Yeah, for, uh, um, for like uh, the Traxxas X01 I was talking about, it'll hit 100 miles in four seconds. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It, it, now, part of it, to but you have to be, you know, it has to be tuned right and yeah. it has to be well, that, the hmm. proper track. You even have to call tracks. you have to call tracks to get a password to, to set yeah. the car to yeah. be allowed to go. Yeah, yeah, you have to, I think you have to, you have to drive it for, um, you have to drive it for 50 hours to get used to it, and it only goes about 50 miles an hour, which is still <laughs> ridiculous. And then um, you have to, you know, call them and then you'll get a code and get you know, on the computer and they'll mock the full power yeah. of it. It's amazing. It's, it's absolutely true. true. Absolutely true. And, it, and it's funny, it can be, now, again, like Cast Races, we've got these. The way, the way this all works, we use radio signal to the car, radio is a receiver gets the radio signal, and then it, the, radio, the receiver then talks to the speed control, the electron, ESC, electronic speed control, which tells the car to go fast or stop, turn left, turn right, which turning, then it talks to the server to do that, but it's almost like the electronic speed control. I, I like to think of it like a carburetor. 
that um, let's say we have a regular car, a six-cylinder car with a one-barrel carburetor, and that's fine. Now let's upgrade our car. Let's let's put a V8 in there. Well, that one-barrel carburetor is not going to be enough. We're, we don't need a four-barrel. We're going to need some fuel injection. So we need a bigger car. We need some need some of that carburetor. Let's upgrade to a V12. Well, now I need I definitely need fuel injection, no carburetor. Maybe I need a supercharger, something to get on the hand. To, that motor wants more juice. It wants gas. It wants air. Well, these electric motors, they want electricity. And so those speed controls, they have to match the size of the motor to feed it. That, that's what they're demanding. If you put a hot rod motor with a kind of a normal speed control, it'll burn it up. Hmm. It's a, the draw of electricity is so great that it'll fry it. It'll, it'll poof and it'll puff of smoke and it smells like rotten eggs. Um, but that's what we're, these, these speed controls, again, they, they've gotten stronger, bigger, meaner, faster, and better as well. But I think that's kind of what Vince was talking about. Again, you have to unlock that speed control to be able to allow that motor to run as strong yep. as they want. So. Hmm. But it's, uh, it, it's, it's become a, an interesting hobby, again, with people going so fast and just, uh, just you know, I say questions and problems that we never thought of. You know, I, I always tell them that the first solution to going too fast is, don't give it so much gas, just right there. Just, yeah. just, just, just back up a little yeah. bit. <laughs> well, yeah, but yeah, everybody gets excited. And, hmm. and again, it's funny, this racing thing. I'm not even a, a racer per se. I mean, I love to play with them too. I'm, I'm, I enjoy the oval racing because all I gotta do is go faster and left. It's easy <laughs> to turn it left and right, it's hard. Putting yeah. on the brakes is hard. Yeah. But but I remember when I, last time I was racing, I get I kind of get into it. I mean, I start perspiring. I, I mean, I'm kind of focused on it. And, <laughs> And this one fellow next to me goes, hey, it's hot inside the truck, isn't it? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know, kind of, you're projecting, you know, yeah, you're, it is, so I'm going I'm to win this race, you know, I'm, I'm pretty intense about this. Um, but then, but it's good fun, I mean, again, it's, uh, until sometimes, again, people get, you know how guys are, we get all testosterone up, and we're all ready to go out and compete and aggressive, and somebody ran into my car, that son of a guy, you know, and, well, sometimes we have issues we need to calm some guys down, but most of the time we don't. And it's wonderful sometimes that you said you had a lady in the class, I wish you were here, because yeah. normally the women that come in that will race with us occasionally, they're so cool. They just lay back and they're not, you, you guys talk all the smack you want to, and they just say, yeah. just beat the crap out of the guys. <laughs> or the little kids, the, mm. little, the little guys mm. come in, they don't know how to fix the car, dad's the mechanic on it, but they play the video games. Yep. They got that eye-hand yeah. coordination yeah. work and they just, beat up on his old guys like there's no tomorrow. Hmm. Um, so it makes it a, again, a kind of a fun hobby, good fun family hobby. So. Hmm. I've got several questions. Sure. But first, sure. Um, you know, when I hear all of this about the, the, the car, I think of so many technology transfers for the real in the future. So do you, do you see that in terms of, you know, the future car? I think, I think yes, yes, absolutely. Thanks. I mean, there's a lot there now. Um, a lot of the cars come with, uh, all kind of setup adjustments uh, to the particular chassis. Um, we have uh, we have setup boards where the guys will dial in the camber casters on the on the tires, uh, on the chassis, uh, the, the tie rods. Um, uh, they they weight the cars and they balance the cars. So they even they'll even put lead weights front forward, left, right to balance the car out to get it mm. to handle better. Mm. Um, they they adjust the ride height of the car. Uh, Lower is better, uh, and uh, it's amazing. The more expensive chassis um, seem to have more setup possibilities, more capabilities to set them up to make them handle better. And yeah, you can do like any dive, any squat, roll centers, all that stuff. I mean, I've watched videos like on YouTube, like how to do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. If you know how to set up, if you know how to set up a car, generally you'll be faster. Even if you, if you nip the other guy, it might have a little bit faster motor or something like that. Yeah. But Hmm. I mean, if this car's not set up, then it means you're going to crap. You know? Yeah, we, we've seen go around a corner. We've seen a lot. We'll see. We'll see a good racer who no knows setup outrun someone who's got oh. better equipment, and it, it, it's the it's the racer. It's, I, I mean, the technology's there, but it still seems like I don't know, maybe eighty percent racer, twenty percent technology, something like that. Yeah. I don't know. For well, us, anyway. eighty hmm. percent racer and twenty percent your pocketbook. <laughs> Interesting. But yeah, there's a lot of it. So again, I don't see that ever going away. Even the bodies, uh, the size, the shape of the bodies, the airfoils, the fins, they're all functional. They work. They, they, it makes a difference. You want wow. me to go ahead and take this? Yeah, please. Go ahead. Oh. Just from, again, this, this, this one, this car here is probably six to seven years old. So it's already been surpassed in terms of its technology. That's a four-wheel drive shaft-driven car. Now we've gone to belt-driven cars. Uh, seem to be hmm. the better in the market. 
They're not uh, as reliable though. Well, they less but rotating mass is what well, they've got. Yeah, but, huh. I mean, they uh, they go, oh, but their um, their belts can you know, wear out like you know a motor too, like a car or something. But like the shock absorbers, the guys they'll change the weight of the the oil in the shock absorbers, uh, make them stiffer, or lighter. Um, they'll put. Just like a NASCAR, take a round of wedge out or, or take a spacer out of a spring. Would they yeah. use spacers and springs to stiff hmm. them up? Um, in this car, it happens to be horizontal instead of vertical springs, but shocks. But that's more like a, huh. a, an Indy wow. car, if you will. But hmm. It's uh, it's again. So yeah, I, the technology. I don't. It, I don't think it ever. It's racing. I don't think it ever stops. Yeah. Um, and our guys have a. Even in our stock classes, which I mentioned before, how we try to have stock classes with rules and limits to try to keep the spending down so you can't put too much technology mm -hmm. in the car, that doesn't preclude these guys from trying to push the limits. Right, it's, I mean, it's I was racing. going to say cheap, but, <laughs> but, that, but that's, it's, they try to push it as far as they can, yeah. and it's all about technology. It, it's how the real, you know, the big leagues is. Well, every driver knows that everyone that walks to our front doors, they're the best driver in the world. So <laughs> yeah. if, got, if I got beat today, it's because he, yeah, he, he cheated. Yeah, he yeah. cheated. He did something. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's how I feel sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I race. Like, huh. Got more money than me. <laughs> you know, this seems so so useful for the STEM movement, for science, tech, engineering, and math, especially in our K through 12. I mean, you you can you know future engineers at at a very young age or at you know at the entry level can learn about gear ratios, can learn about you know these things that in you know in in you know at the at the track actually they would work on the practice yeah. you know, putting a wedge in and all of that yeah it, it, you know what I, I hate again maybe it's just me but we've been like I say we've been in business now for again 14 15 years I have seen person I mean young kids come in they're eight or nine years old they're now grown men they're 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 24 years old several work in any car teams I mean their sure. passion there you go. was exactly. in racing and they started with us they really started with us and it's uh it's it's kind of fun to see it, uh, and it, I'm talking about drag race guys. That uh, one of our kids won his Wally, and now he's into the drag racing business. And another's huh. uh, on, a, on, a, on an Indy car team. Um, they started playing with us with RC cars, and they've just made it a profession and moved on with it. But it is amazing to see it happen. Um, and and these young people I've seen over the years. I mean, you know, they're getting married and having babies now. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, this is crazy. Wow. Huh. We've been around long to see that, but it's, hmm. yeah, it's happened. It's Do you, happened. Are there K through 12 schools embracing this, or maybe there, is there any connections anywhere you know beyond here? Yeah, every or? once in a while, we'll get a call from the Cub Scouts. So they'll, yeah, they'll, right, they'll right. want to come through and play and stuff right. like that. Well, I think our, our our entry point price levels are still a little bit higher than most of them want to. True. Before we got into our circuit car racing, we did a lot more in the slot car racing. Slot car racing is much less expensive. Mm. Um, when I was a kid, that was the technology yeah. of the day back then. Yeah. Um, and it was a big wooden track with eight lanes, and you just sat there and gave the car gas. You no steering, no driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the cars today would cost thirty dollars instead of two hundred fifty dollars. Right. Um, so the price point is still a little high for just the for you know fifteen Cub Scouts coming to play with the cars. Right. Um, we used to rent cars to people, but too many people, too many full speed into the wall yeah, at first. You know, yeah, yeah. boy, that was cool, wasn't it? Flying into parks. <laughs> Okay, there's another two hours worth of wrench time for us to put yeah. them back together. Huh. Um, so, no, we, I, I'd like to say there's some, but not at the real young age. At the high school age, yeah. For sure, fact, yeah. Um, That's how I get started. There's some of the robotics programs. Uh, exactly. A lot of our, all of our cars obviously have servos that move the steering. Um, before the electronic speed controls, we had manual speed controls that also required a servo to move the throttle. Uh, but we, we're beyond that now. Um, but we've got a couple guys that are really into robotics. A couple of our guys actually work at um, a factory where they enter, you know, one guy works for a Japanese factory where they have a national competition every year. He's like one of the top five finishers in the national competition. And he's one of our best RC racers, but that's his Is that the, is that the guy with the he's, tire warmers? Yeah, he used to talk. <laughs> tire warmers. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Seriously. <laughs> we're crazy. This guy, he's the, it's, uh, he races what, Friday nights yeah, and, Friday nights. and yeah. Saturday mornings. He's. He's one. Of the, he's always like second, first. Yeah. Well, he's he's got he's got all the mm. tricks. The, uh, there he's there are people that are racing. paid that make a living racing RC cars. Mm. Racing. They're they're sponsored drivers and they travel the country, um, winning the major events and getting their name in the magazine, the, the trade magazines, and they're paid by the sponsors and the manufacturer of the cars, just like 
racing, you mm. know, IndyCar racing or NASCAR mm-hmm. racing. Mm. Um, they're, and in fact, they're required to, you know, if you're a sponsored driver, they require you to be at those races and they want to see you in the winner's category bragging about how you use their parts this weekend and mm. that's why everybody else in the world should buy them. So, mm. and some, it's, it could be very serious, just like group car racing. Oh, yeah. mm. it gets, Interesting. Yeah, it's been... I say that's why it's that's why it gets for me from my angle. It's kind of hard to walk that line. I mean, people ask us a lot. Why don't we have a big money race? Why don't you have a big national race and event at your place? You got a lot of people. How much fun would be? And wouldn't it be great for your local people to compete against some of those national names? Yeah. And so we've done it. We've tried it. We've done it in the past, um, without a lot of success though. We, we we bring in the national guys and we'll we'll you know five hundred dollars to win, a thousand dollars to win. Our local guys get intimidated. Mm. And, oh, there's no way I can beat Tony Smith because he's the world champion and, you know, driver. Mm. But here's a chance. I mean, okay, yeah, okay, you can't beat him. Maybe you can, but just get close. Or, God forbid, think if you did beat him. If you beat him on your home track, mm. you know, you've accomplished something. Mm. But our guys, they, they don't, they don't, they just feel intimidated, I suspect. Yeah, it makes um, sense. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Any questions? Any? Mm. Maybe, no. Okay. Well, guys, well, thanks for Let me come tell you about my, our, our hobby, yeah. our passion. It's really interesting. Uh, I like it. Thanks. Really yeah. I had a lot of fun with you guys. If you I bet it. ever get a chance, stop by. Or get, or get, look at the videos. I'm, they're all over YouTube. and It's not just us. There's several places, but um, it's just a great hobby. It just, it's a way that someone who loves racing can participate, you know, as a driver, but not, you know, everybody, we've never lost anybody, no one, no mortality. Exactly, no deaths. Uh, the, that one kid, that we, we, able to, we got his finger reattached with no yeah. <laughs> hmm. But yeah, I mean, it's been fun and, and it's it's competitive and, and you know, it's, it's so many of the fathers or grandfathers that bring their grandsons. Um, it's awesome to see those relationships. I mean, you know how easy it is for a kid to go hide in a bedroom on his laptop or his phone or and just kind of the PlayStation and, and he kind of zones out from the rest of us. When they come down to race with us, they've got to interact. They've got to talk to people. They've got to talk to me. They, right. they have to work on their tactic. They got to work. They got to touch their cars. Um, it, it just you got to it, it, it just get some going. It energizes them, and, and it's it's great to see that. It's sometimes it's a little bit you know, a lost thing nowadays, but um, but it is. So they've got to interact, and it's cool, kind of cool. You say I talk about the role of Traxxas. It's you know, they sponsor everything now. You see them in so much more in racing. So you have an RC manufacturer who's now sponsoring truck races, and, and you know you can see USAC races. You'll see them. Um, is that helping you? And, and and do you? Is it almost a deal where they have a monopoly, perhaps? Well, the answer is yes. They are helping us. They, yeah. Yeah. They really. They really last. I'm going to say the last five or six years, they've really taken charge. Um, Traxxas has been around for a long time. Um, they're one of the few that's the last ones that's actually in America. They're Plano, Texas, where they're headquartered. Huh. Um, and, um, and so they're everywhere in the United States. They're every, every hobby store in the country will carry Traxxas parts or has the ability to get Traxxas parts. Um, my son graduated from um, college three years ago. He's in Chicago working now. When he was about eight or nine, I bought him his first truck, which happened to be a Traxxas truck. We still have it. it we can still get parts for it. it um, mm. Easily get parts for it. Mm. Um, so their, their quality is good, but they're really, historically, we're known, and they, I guess they still are known for being what, what we call a basher truck. Yeah, they're, mm. they're, there's, there's a truck, uh, well, truck that they have now. It's called a slash, and it's a two-wheel drive uh, brushless, well-brushed uh, truck, and it's you can run at full speed, 30 miles an hour, to a brick wall, it won't break. <laughs> And yeah. so, just, I mean, they're heavy duty. Just, you know, they bash them, bash them, jump them, beat them, stamp on them. They just keep going. The right. time axis it just keeps right. working. Yeah. You know? um, and which is great. Uh, and so that's really made it a lot, you know, a lot easier for a new person to get to the hobby that, you know, if and used they, to, the first truck you buy, you go out and hit the wall, oh God, it's broke, it's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, they, right. Uh, drop the price on them too. So. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. they, they're, they're very curt. Yeah. About 100, 100 or 200 bucks. Um, so Traxxas is done, and then and anyway, but the last two or three, it's the last four or five years, I should say, they have become not just a basher truck, but now they are taking a much higher profile into the racing side of the market. And they've been a tremendous sponsor again for the short course truck racing series, and now other drag racing, and other things as well. Um, um, but it's helped sales. It's it, we, they make a, a 
a short course version, a 10 scale version of their big racing trucks. Hmm. Um, and they were the first ones to market. They, they, they were really crafty. We, we thought before they were a little stodgy and sleepy, but they woke up or something happened. But they, in this hmm. case, they were first and they captured the market, market uh, and it was tremendous. It took about a year for the other manufacturers to catch up with them. So Traxxas still has that reputation of being a, again, a durable, well-built, heavy-duty kind of a truck, but it's still not known for being the fastest race truck. There are other manufacturers that have got more of that racing tradition. There's a Team one called Associated. Team Associated and Losi. It's, it's almost like, we, to my, uh, yeah, we kind of tell people that the, the tracks is that's the old GM Ford, that's the huh. hang it, that car will blast for hours yeah. But the Ferrari Porsche, so that's that's huh. team associated low C. That's um, interesting, higher end, more adjustments, more money, yeah, uh, a little more fragile because they're going quicker. Um, but the tracks is you just stand on it. So, so at our place, we do both. I said mm. the tracks has become our stock class where we keep it cost mm. control, keep it new people, very durable, perfect, perfect for them. And then the higher end, you want to go faster, here's the open class, buy the Losi, buy the Associated, put in the four or $500 motor system, go 65 miles an hour, um, but make sure you can make the turn at the end of the straightaway, because mm -hmm. if you straight to that wall is going to hurt if you, mm. if you don't move. Um, and so we do both. Mm. Um, but yeah, Trax has been tremendous. They've, they've, done, it, they've been just superb. Uh, they've done a lot for the hobby, and again, and a lot for racing. So yeah, yeah it was at a Mid Ohio at an Indy car race, and they were in the fan village with the demo, and they were having a car. I mean, they were just trying to. He was doing flips, is landing on its top, and <laughs> rolling over somehow, and this is just a really good, good product go placement well. too. Yeah, that's another thing with the new uh, monster truck they have. It's you know it's pretty durable, but when it's on its back, it, it self right self right yeah. yeah, yeah, the self right pretty <laughs> And that, that new truck, but we were talking about lipo batteries earlier, about two cells and three cells. The yeah, new right. Traxxas truck, the, the, it's going to run on two, six. three cells or six yeah. cell lipo batteries, which is just amazing. Huh. Uh, but again, it's a huge, big, heavy-duty truck. It's a fifth-scale truck. It's hmm. big. It's big in fifth-scale, I think. But I haven't seen one in person. Uh, oh, we, we, we had one at the store. We've already sold, uh, we sold, sold out. Sold out. They, they yeah. can't get another one. We're back to work for more. Huh. Um, the tires on this truck are as big as the other old Mont, as big as an Emax. Oh. So it's just, it's, it's fifth-scale. It's probably, I don't know, three feet long and a couple of feet wide. Wow. It's just a big old cool. nasty monster truck. Just run over everything. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> not much racing. Though. Yeah, not that. That we don't race. It's where we're at. It's just we don't have the room for that thing. And of course, there's other other um, industries in RC, like RC, rock crawling. Oh gosh, yeah. There's yes. yeah. There's a lot of variations of rock crawling, drag racing. Um, of course, planes and boats. The, the, now the boats yeah. are all yeah. taken over, but yeah. Huh. But yeah, but you, you, been, you mentioned uh, like rock crawling is a real big part of the hobby now, where they take these trucks. They this is a really more of a scale part of the hobby. Yeah. They want the trucks to look like a real, mm -hmm. honest to God, everyday yeah, truck that's here on the road. They, mm -hmm. they, you know, you can look at a truck and it looks exactly like a real one you have out in the parking lot, but that's a $2,000 truck. Right, right. And yeah. the truck you got out in the parking lot is something like a $1,000. <laughs> 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 and they, hmm. and, they, and they, they compete with these trucks also. They run them over obstacle courses in a timed event. So they have, they'll put the tennis balls on a big pile of rocks and here and here and here, and you've got to drive through the course, like a skier, like a solemn skier, um, without tipping over. If you do, you can use your electric winch to winch your truck back up. Huh. We're going to time you also. So, fastest one through the course with fewer fewer demerits, fewer yeah, penalties. You back up. Have to huh. if you have to back, that's right. You got to back up. That's a penalty. That's, yeah. Yeah. So that, that that's another form of competition in the RC. Interesting. Yeah. Lipo. These batteries. Can they ever be used in our cars down the road? You think? I don't. I. I Is that? I, I don't know. I, if I suspect they've already that or better already. I don't know if Formula E is probably using yeah. them already. I mean, I would suspect they were. It's like Tesla, those few. I think some of that's already, that, they've probably already gone beyond like those. That, right. right. There's a new battery technology out there. Already? They're trying to, yeah. And that's where, you know, you, what a great place to test out these technologies. Yeah. You know, obviously not humans strapped to these things. But, uh, I mean, I really do. I think all, everything that you learn in racing, in one way or another, can it be applied to these small cars? Mm -hmm. I mean, they basically, they are scale models of the real things, right. and uh, and so the same dynamics, the same same things that affect the performance of a real car will affect the performance of these models on a scale basis. And it's funny yeah. on a scale basis, we're talking about these ten scale cars running 100 miles an hour or 30, even to say 30 miles an hour right out of the box with 
with, with inexpensive components. Well, that's 10 scale. If we were to multiply that 30 miles an hour times 10, huh. they're running 300 miles an hour. <laughs> I mean, they're on a scale basis, they're yeah. already light speed. Yeah. I mean, huh. <laughs> that's just, they're amazing. Again, when you think about it, damn, that's really, they're, you would not treat your personal car in any way, shape, or form like you would treat that RC car banging against the right, wall right, at right. 300 miles an hour. Oh, damn, it broke. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet it did. <laughs> let's, get, let's get a video shown so that we can see kind of these sure. cars in action. Yeah, that uh, Traxxas XC01, uh, I believe it's one seventh scale, so that's 700 miles an hour. That's These are, we're going to talk about the cars or yeah. anything? Or That's, uh, those are 10 scale touring cars. That's what we raised on Friday nights and on yeah. Saturday. I have one of those. Uh, this is mine. I think that one actually was mine. Yeah, I think they're mine. Yeah, they're all real scale bodies. You can get pretty much any car. So do, do, do different bodies play a role as well? Like different downforce? Yeah, and, and yeah I mean, there is, there is a class that. Uh, it's like a train, what is it, Trans Am or something? Yeah, Trans Am. Yeah, you can only run like, you know, 60s American car or something. Um, but yeah, whatever whatever fits your fancy, you can run. And so that's piping, you can move, or move around all the time. Yeah, yeah it is. Exactly. Exactly. The walls. Yeah, it's a, it's a custom rail system that will fix it. You can change the track in 10 minutes. That's awesome. That's great. We're actually running on a carpet surface too. It's an Ozite carpet. Which means it's little glued pieces, so there's no tread, there's no uh, no left right bias to it. Oh, right, it's just, right. It's a, actually it's a fairly inexpensive carpet, but it's pretty durable. Huh. Yeah, how many times have you had to the place? Uh, three, with three, three times in the last 50 years. Or something. Wow. So we're we'll probably getting we'll get close. We we'll did. So the grooves, I'm sure, the city forming the. Well, I mean, we keep moving it around. Yeah, it yeah, we keep that. We'll move it back to it and stuff and that cleans it up. Huh. And so the, I saw you heard you mention off road and on road. And so what, what are the differences? The difference. The, the that track would be considered off road. All we would do to make it off road would be to throw jumps out. Right, right. Uh, we would put jumps out with BMX bicycle. We found it. BMX bicycle ramps seem to be the best. We can carry those out there, drop them down. We put down a little extra carpet so as they jump over so they don't hurt the underneath carpet. Um, and so we'll put three or four jumps around the track and that makes it co quote off road. We used to have an outdoor a dirt track with yeah, we did. lawsuit and noise complaints. From no, it's still figured. Because yeah. these were since it's, 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 it's outdoors. We kill a racing yeah. ball for it's it's outdoors. It was nitro and uh, you know gasoline they were running. And, oh, uh, right, right. So you don't want that obviously indoors. Yeah. yeah. Or I'm sure. Fuse, yeah. Um, yeah, so. What's that? So the corner of Marshall sitting at the corners, like I said, can you imagine seeing Danny Granger standing there at yeah, all? Yeah, yeah. Just that big frame. That is funny. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, also Googling um, the World Championship. Or, yes. Uh, that's where I saw the off road. Yeah, like some, some, of those, um, some of those buggies that they run, at least four scale buggies, they, they've learned how to hit the ramp just right. And be able to turn in the air and land and land in a different position, ready to go around the curve or whatever. That's it's amazing. Some of the drivers out there. How long they are? There we go. Yeah, re That's the associated type of brand. So as far as the media, is there coverage? I don't know. There is a RC Racer TV on YouTube, but they don't really, they do a lot of, it's over in Europe, a lot of it, so. It's the standing start. Hey, for the, uh, for the LTO NASCAR, if you guys said, we should do a roll. We thought about it, if we could get them to all kind of cooperate. We just did the, it's, I mean, it's very similar to Supercross, to decide whether or not to do you know, a triple jump here, or maybe do double. a double double. Right. I mean, it's just that's exactly right. It's cars, yeah. but it's motorcars. Yeah. And and this, and I'm not sure what the, I didn't see the date on this, but I wonder. This is 2015. Okay, 15. So. Okay. Right. <laughs> and some of these things can can weigh you know 15, 20 pounds in the air. Yeah. 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 Ye
Uh, those do wheelies. Those, you know, do wheelies. I have a truck uh, that uh, it's it's powerful enough. I'll go full speed and I'll hit the brakes and it does front flips because nice. the brakes are on. It's crazy. Yeah. I could, I could see you know people bumping into each other. And, oh yeah. I mean, I mean, if you see if you see some of them, if once they, you can see them when they go over the they go over the ramp, they can stop their wheels and it puts like, it puts the nose down or it puts the uh, the rear down or whatever you know, so it can land just right. Some of those races. You, really you're, you're familiar with the Kitney Avenue, the, 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 the racing that goes on over there, the Fenway racing. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, well, we're close to that area, so a lot of those drivers come over and play with us all winter. Yeah. And they're known, those guys, pretty rough. Yeah, they're yeah. rough people. Yeah. Now, when you go to a Kitley race, you watch guys running across the infield with tire riders chasing each other. Yeah. But we let them run a figure eight on our track and at the end of the night. There's, that, so you guys have a figure eight also? Well, we can do it. Yeah. We don't yeah. do it every week, but we, we, yeah, we can. We, we can do it. We've done it. That's cool. They really love it. When we, they particularly love it when we do that. But. Are you the only track in Indy? Only, only indoor, indoor we're, the, we're the only indoor carpet track at the moment. There have been several that have come and gone right, right, at the moment. There's an indoor dirt track. How does the brakes work on these? Where's the indoor dirt track? Uh, oh, sorry. It's just like what well, indoor dirt track? It's um, it's like one, it's like one twenty fourth in like post or something. Yeah, up around post. It's road. JCP something, something like that. <laughs> um. But yeah, for the for the brakes, um, generally the brakes work really good when it's a four wheel drive like this is, and it just for the motors it just hits the reverse, like it it can it, the polarity changes in the motors and, okay. and it just slows it down like that. And but I mean if you get to the fifth scale, there are um, they have it now when the motors can be liquid cooled, and the and the ESCs are like they're fan cooled or liquid or whatever you know with with boats they are, and then um, and they actually have hydraulic disc brakes. For the you know the bigger ones because you know they weigh like 50 pounds or like you know upwards upwards of that or something and, you know, and that it is just putting too much strain on the motor to slow it down. Yeah, that's so, beautiful. Yeah, that's like yeah. uh, <laughs> that's Europe or something. Well, Tyler has one in California like that. Yeah, it's, it's, RC racing is a lot bigger in Asia, but you don't they don't do a lot of media coverage. I don't think. Uh, why so, why so, is it bigger in Asia? I'm, because I think uh, in well in China it, it was communist and. Um, they, people couldn't own cars, and so RC cars. Interesting. And so now that's why they have so many cars and stuff now. And what's great is you know it doesn't matter you know what you look like, how old you are. You, know, it's, you can you can race. You can play. Yeah, go out and play. Why don't you have good eyeballs? I mean, yeah, like I say young people have an advantage over old guys. Right, right, yeah. It's not fair. You just said I was aging now. <laughs> To my, to my, you know, you mentioned about manufacturers. Tobias is another manufacturer. They have a six series circuit throughout the United States. Uh, they call it their TCS Championship Series. Uh, three weeks ago, it was over in Ohio. It was their, one of their fourth or fifth races. Anyway, they do six regional races throughout, and they're free. Anybody come? You got to use their equipment, their cars, their parts. Um, um, but if you win one of those regional races, they send you to their California finals, and they'll have the major race off competition in California. And if you win that, they send you to Japan to compete in the world. Yeah, yeah. So Tobias sponsors all that. I mean, and, and so they're, yeah. yeah, it's like the same thing with that uh, the guy that won the Gran Turismo thing or whatever. Right, and right. Raced in Le Mans or yeah. whatever it was. So interesting. Yeah. But that's the kind of tracks they have in California and you know, these World Cup type races. I mean, they're beautiful, and smooth, dedicated only to RC cars. It's not. It's not our parking lot out back, you know, it's right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Garbage starts driving over or anything. It's all fans of it. Oh, yeah, it is. They've got bushes around the edges. Beautiful. Huh. I'm jealous. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember growing yeah. up, uh, we'd go down to Gray Brothers Cafeteria, and there was one right next to Gray Brothers. I don't know if that's probably way gone, right next to Ward's Apparel. That, that would have been late 80s, early 90s. And I remember this Gray Brothers, I don't know if you've been down there, and they had that huge line always at the cafeteria. Oh, 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 oh. So I'd run over there to watch RC cars and come back. I remember the smell. I know that over here on the west side of town, the velodrome where they run the bicycles yeah. on the there three or five, oh, maybe five years ago, they were running a lot of RC cars on that track, that wood track, that bank track. And that was before the technology is really advanced. So yeah. but the cars still went very fast and I mean and when they would crash they would 
just shattered. They, shattered. they were going to pieces, yeah, yeah disintegrated. Because I mean, they, they were going 70, 80 miles an hour in the head. So, um, Alex, I don't know if they raced the velodrome anymore, the cars, if they still allow them. But, but I know that they did it one time on that bank track. And, yeah, I think I've, I've seen the world record for Fast and RC, and it's like, you know, big around 300 miles an hour or so. Or around maybe 250 or something. Okay. That's crazy. And, that, and then you see the thing crash, and it's almost perfectly fine. <laughs> it's all carbon fiber. Hmm. Yeah, I, uh, on Ustream, it's an app which, uh, and I, I see occasionally there will be a, a live stream of, of a race. Yeah, true. If someone just has the camera kind of up in their corner of their venue, and yeah. stars can always kind of watch, and once again, get my racing fix in the winter, you know, exactly as a fan, just like the participants. RC, uh, RC Racing TV does that on YouTube sometimes. Huh. Are those live? Yeah, sometimes. That's yeah, they're, they're that's live. Because that's, you know, this sport, I mean, can grow like, in terms of, of the coverage. Well, it's, it's amazing. I say, uh, you know, on a Saturday, I mean, our place is a great day, per se, but on a Saturday night, my last Saturday, or during the winter months here, uh, stayed here a moment. It's back. How many would that be? Uh, a couple hundred? We had, I bet we had, we had 11 heats. I bet we had 80 to 90 entries wow. just on our local club every week. They had the week races. Um, that was no special event. Um, so I, at least we, we try not to put more than eight vehicles in one race. So 11, 11, 11 heats, we probably got eight or nine years. Close to that. Um, it gets too long. It gets rough. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. You're into the end of the night. So do you, uh, do you have employees? I do. I've got I've got a high school kid that helps me on, on occasion. He Saturday nights, and I've got another fellow that works. Uh, he works Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturdays as well. Huh. And so we're closed on Mondays. Uh, it's my down day. That's when I do most of my ordering. And I say today is I was putting stuff away. So and then um, we're open in the evenings, late, and all day Saturday, all day Sunday. Um, but yeah, so just me, uh, 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 another guy, three days a week, and then next week. Huh. Do you, know, you have any suggestions or tips for for these guys in terms of just just in general the skills you know that, that would be necessary going forward just in business? Yeah, you know things that you've learned that you never would have learned in college, but yeah. you've learned along the way that you could share. Yeah, I, I think it, this is going to sound kind of corny, but and so we we have uh, not to brag, but we have lasted longer than most of these places last. The last three or four years, and they're gone. Um, I don't want to sound the ultimate capitalist here, but the new people, when, when, if I can get a new person, dad or son, to walk through my front door, they don't buy one car or one truck. They buy three or four or five or six. They probably, you know, dad's got to get one, kid's got to, they got to brace together. Mom's going to get one. You know. yeah. Um, yeah, that when, when we get a new customer, I, I, we'll, we'll make three, four, five thousand dollars over the course of a year with that new person. Mm -hmm. um, if I get an experienced 25-year veteran racer who thinks he's, are we still on camera? Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, that's all right. <laughs> who's, who's high end, yeah, uh, yeah. who has kind of an attitude, and he's, yeah. you know, I'm really, really good. Um, he may spend a couple hundred bucks over the course of a year, just his race entry fees. He's already got all the fancy tools and the chargers and the batteries, and he's got his online buddies he's buying things through. So he, he's, it, for me, as a source of revenue, he's, he's not, I appreciate the help that he's come to our store, but you know, as long as he's a nice person, he's getting along with them, great. If he gets crabbier, or if he belittles my newer, younger racers, which some of them do, that you know, why are you race that piece of crap? Why don't you step up and do something? You know, um, that that bothers me because what keeps us alive are our local racers and these new people. We, you know, we're not in a warehouse hidden behind two or three other warehouses just come find us. We're in a pretty good retail location, a lot of visibility, and. I, sus I suspect everybody, anybody, every, any and everybody in Indianapolis who's into this RC hobby has at one time or another been through our front doors. Um, every one of them. Um, most, in fact, damn near all of them. I know they have. Or they raced with us for a long time and they moved on. They got better than us. They moved up. They went to the Nationals. They, they now drive to Chicago and compete in races in Chicago at the National level instead of their home track here in Indy. Um, again, someone said it best. One of our, one of our competitors said it. You know, well, if you want to go, you want really RC, good good RC racing, you'll go to XYZ place. 
But if you just want to have fun, then you'll go down there to DRC. Huh. Well, he, I think he meant that to be offensive to me, but I took it like, yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I, that's what I want as, as a as an economist or what I mean. That's where that's what pays my bills, keeps my lights on. Hmm. Those new young people coming in, they're buying stickers and bodies and paint and brushes and, and oh, just yeah. everything, and, and they're and they're keeping us alive. And <laughs> that's that's who I play to. I, I hmm. intentionally. It's. I mean, I, I love racing. We, we, we all, we, in fact, we love racing. I'd, I'd rather see a racer on the track than a racer in the pits working on his car because his car broke. That's no fun. That, that, for some people, it's no fun. They want to get out there and race. Some people just want to paint cars. Everybody's a little bit different, but most people just want to get out there and race. Yeah. So that's what I would like to see him do too. But, but I say, I, you don't have to go, you know, shoot for the stars. You're, you're, uh, the guys that can, we keep it affordable. We keep our prices down. We keep the racing down. We try to. Again, like I said, we have those monthly memberships. We try to keep our racing fees, our costs, as low as possible. I don't have a lot of overhead. Um, the truth is, it's going to sound egotistical again, but I already made my money. I made money on Wall Street. I made millions, okay? I made a ton of money. I don't need to be doing this shit. Yeah. I, don't ha I don't have to do this. I don't. If this becomes a job, I, I don't need to. Yeah. I've already got, I got a house in Florida. i got a house down in Daytona. Yeah. I, I've, I've, I've got this, this shopping center. I've got... I've got an IRA that'll choke a horse. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I've retired at 45, literally retired. Um, I'm not doing this to make a buck. If the place pays the rent, I'm happy. I keep my cost down. We have fun. It's a great time, and I'm enjoying life. Um, you know, it, if it becomes a, a hassle, I probably would let it go too. But I, again, it's not even, it never, it never was my passion to start with. It was my brother's passion to start this kind of a hobby, this business. Um, he got tired of it, got burned out with it, a lot of, again, realizing there's a lot of work in running a small business. And there is. I mean, when you're the janitor, the plumber, the fix-it guy, the accountant, the, the, the plumber, I mean, you do it all. And, um, you know, it's, sometimes it isn't fun, but you got to do it. <laughs> um, I just got to keep thinking that we're in the entertainment business. And we really, again, we are. That's what we've got. Racing, that's what we're about. If the fans don't come, we're, we're done. So... The racers don't, in my case, the racers don't, we don't charge them entry to come in and watch, but, but if the racers don't come and have a good time, if I haven't made a, a comfortable environment, a clean environment, um, then I'm in trouble. But so far, we've been real fortunate. And, but it's not, it's not a cakewalk. And again, there's plenty of failures out there before me. Uh, we just, I think we've got the right market. Like I, said, I think the other guys that come and go, they, they, again, it's a group of fellows that start something and they think they know all about it. They're the experts. And, they don't have time to share that with the younger people and, and bring them up, and, and I think that's where they miss it, and that's where I think we make it. So that's that's my secret. There is a secret. Definitely. Yeah, I can tell that the you know I have a degree in finance, so I can relate somewhat. Uh, but you know your stock market, you, you're aware of trends. Yeah. You're kind of aware of you know of different markets, and so the same thing applies. You're you're doing it now, even though it's a whole different you know you know scope and scale. Yeah. But you know understanding where trends are going, understanding. You know other ideas like the healthcare membership idea. I mean, it's incorporating that and kind of is, is beyond than just the guy who's as wealthy as I want to. We, we had a we had a real threat because before we were one of the few tracks that was indoors, and these guys opened up this indoor dirt track, and we were real jealous because there is a part of the hobby that loves dirt. And when we, we had our outdoor dirt track in the summer, which helped offset some of that seasonality. But when they opened up their track, I thought, oh, this is going to hurt because our off road is fun. But it's not near as much fun as running the dirt. And the, these buggies are made for the dirt. They slide, you, yeah. and they and they can do those natural triple jumps, and so they're much better. And so it is more fun. And I thought, oh, this is going to kill us, and it did. We we lost a bunch of our racers. They all migrated to the dirt track, and I can't blame them. They they weren't mad at us. They weren't mean. They just that was more fun. Um, so as a business person, I thought, what am I going to do? How am I going to offset this? And so what I did, we went. We, we kept what we had, but we also introduced these smaller trucks. Trucks that he had, this guy that bought the built the indoor dirt track had a huge warehouse facility. And it was a big long track, 160 foot long straightaways, and that's great. Our straightaway is 65 foot long, so we're not near as big. We'll never get to the same speeds that they are. So I went to a smaller truck, more suitable for our facility because we are smaller. Um, and as I got people into that truck, what I found out, the margins on that truck were better. Well, that, that was a good thing. Yeah. But secondly, if I got them into that truck, the second or third or fourth truck they bought was another smaller truck. They didn't upscale to the bigger size trucks. So I was able to keep my customer. 
if our strength is getting people to walk through that front door and tying them into a vehicle, then I'm going to tie them into the small truck if I can versus the big truck because they won't go down to the competitor down the street. Mm -hmm. They'll stay with me. Mm -hmm. And that worked out pretty good too. Uh, t tonight, Tuesday night is our micro scale night. Oh. Devoted. You can get into that at about what, 100 bucks or so? Yeah, 100 bucks. The entry, the entry, entry level is much lower, 99 dollars, 99 99 you're in. And ready to run, radio, everything, battery charger. Um, and and it, you know, it's, it, it's great, it works. So Tuesday nights uh, is micro night and we don't let the big trucks come in and race because they'll run over the little trucks. But it's their night and it's, they love it. So that's, that helped us out a lot, things like that, those kinds of things. Just looking for those spots. Um, because these guys, they'll never leave to go down the road to do the big stuff. They'll stay with that. Just for you guys to, if you want to know where they're at, they're at what, South Inverson? Yep. So just three. about, what, a mile and a half south of 465 yep. right. off of Inverson? Yep, Inverson yeah, Avenue Beach Grove exit. Yep, we're just right down the street. So. I think this is the one I was watching earlier, the World Chip. This one's on dirt. Is the I'm really good. Like, those dirt tracks, they are fun. I, mean, it, they, I think that, look, that looks like dirt. I don't know if it's yeah, like that's dirt. Dirt. That's dirt. It's like a clay track, that's what it is. And then, you know, and there's tire compounds that are different for every track. Right. Uh, On-road, oh, yeah. off-road, soft, soft dirt, hard dirt, blue groove, clay. Really? It's amazing. I get you guys, it's amazing. And then there, I mean, there's different companies, and then they have this <laughs> different compounds. And consumers. then you can make, and then and it's like tire break-in as well. And then there's some compound you can put on the tires to make it stick better. Traction, yeah, tire traction, tire, tire, tire dope, we call it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do all that stuff, I mean, it's... <laughs> See, those are eight scale nitro buggies there, gas buggies or electric buggies, and that's a real popular class for their eight scale buggies. Yeah, well, they, I heard a story one time, a guy, uh, he was a marshal, and uh, he, uh, one buggy was like flipped over at the, at, the oh. bottom of a, at the bottom of a ramp like that. You and, get hurt, uh, though, they're big. And, uh, and then another one was flying over, and the, and the guy, uh, he was trying to, when he landed, he was going to swerve out of the way, and he did. While he was swerving out of the way, the, the marshal stepped over the flipped over buggy and, and he got smacked in the leg. Yeah. Came back with limping. You know? Yeah, the, those <laughs> so. the, those have steel chassis. You see, most of the marshals have behind hail bales or hay, hay bales. Mm -hmm. um, they hit you that you've been hit. You, you know you've been hit with one of those. Uh, <laughs> so I assume lighter is faster? Uh, lighter is faster to a point. Again, yeah. what they do with the bigger, heavier vehicles, they just put bigger motors and bigger batteries in them. Right. Um, when you get up to fifth scale, that's where they really become weary, weary about the safety rules. There they'll put up three foot fences. They won't let Marshall stand on the track at fifth scale. Um, if there's a crash or a spin out, they'll red light the, the, the race and go out and straighten the cars and restart them. Uh, eight scales is where they get, they got Marshalls out there with eight scale, but that's, the, that's about the limit. They won't let any bigger, they're just too much of a liability. Fifth scale is about the size of this table. So. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Big foot. Uh, and they're expensive. You know, you no, get one, huge. one fifth the size. Yeah, one fifth out of the box. You can get them, you know, made and everything. They come ready to run about two thousand bucks or so. So on a on a, on a, uh, a remote, is that what they would be called? Radio. Do you have other buttons that they, for example, a traction control or? No, we haven't came that far yet. We haven't. Yeah. No, there is um there is this thing. It's called uh it's uh it's called TS TSM for Traxxas, but. Uh, or is it Losi came out with it first? It's where um, it uh, it counter steers so you can keep going straight. See if you're going on a bumpy bumpy uh, road for off road or something. Instead of your car like fishtailing all over the place, it automatically it has gyros and it automatically adjusts the steering for you to go straight. And it does the same. And they have another one for drifting as well. Uh, um, drift, they're drifting. Wow. Yeah. Oh, 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 if you look on YouTube, drifting is huge, especially yeah. you know Asian Asia, market yeah. as well. It's huge, and they're just like the rock crawling, you know, looking like scale and everything. But let me add the, the radios, though. There, there's even more. Um, a lot of the, the higher end radios, they come with telemetry. Huh. Well, you do have sensors on your motor and sensors for temperature. You can from your radio, you can detect what your car, your engine temperature is. You can watch the RPMs, uh, what your RPM is, your your actual speed, um, voltage, voltage, battery voltage. That exactly. LED screen. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Little little video, just like your cell phone now. I mean, that. Mm -hmm. Three and four hundred dollar radios, but they're digital. Also, they've got the technology. For example, when you pull your tr your trigger back, that's your throttle release. You go forward. When you go back to neutral, then you need to go forward to put the brake on. Right? That's how it normally works. Well, now when you go back to neutral, you can have your drag brake take over, so that it automatically begins to brake for even before you go into neutral, uh -huh. before you go into reverse. 
and you can adjust it in increments of like 5%. So I have 5% drag breaker, or you have 25% drag breaker, what, 100%. Right. So uh, being able to adjust all that stuff is down all from your radio, live time, real, real time. As you're racing, you've got these screens. You can see this and adjust it as you're going. Wow. Um, that's cool. So it's, that's, that continues to be hmm. It's almost like, you know, Formula One, they've got that, that DRS, that wing that opens up when they go down the straights. I mean, you could almost add that, like almost boost as another option. And, in the future, like you mentioned, I mean, who knows where it's going to end up? But, oh, yeah. I mean, well, those speed controls I was saying before that now that you now they've got cables where you can hook up to your laptop and you can absolutely com program your speed control yeah. to you can you can, pro you can program the, uh, the power curve and everything on them too and torque and everything. Well, you want you want a lot of roll out, or do you are you doing wheelies already? You want to back the roll out down a little bit, yeah. and then go to full power. Uh, it's some of them come stock like that. I know the Dromeda, which is about a hundred dollar car, you can adjust the the throttle. Well, the top speed or whatever, and it comes stock like that. You know, it's not even like it's maybe like a ten dollar radio or something. You know, they've got dual rate switches on them. Dual rate meaning when you're a steering servo, if you if you turn the steering wheel, I tend to over. I get excited, so when I'm racing, I oversteer. I turn it too far, the car does it too much. So what you can do is you can say full. If I fully turn all the way, it goes that far. Well, I can adjust the dual rate so that when I turn it fully, it only goes that far. So like when I, I tell you, I like to race the oval, I can have my car adjusted so that when I oversteer, my car will only turn so much, and I'll have it set up for the oval that I can oversteer every time, and it's perfect around the track. Right, right. So, uh -huh. That's cool. Um, it's, it's the transfer is over. <laughs> and then they, uh, I know with the, what, with the quadcopters or whatever, they have where you can race those too, but I'm sure you can put them in trucks, and you can put goggles on, like put them in the cabin seat, and act like you're actually driving the truck. You know, when you have a yeah. control, or I mean, they, they have it where you know, like uh, uh, video games, where you have an actual steering wheel and stuff. I'm sure you can do the same thing with RC car. We can put the glasses on. Huh. So I mean, I mean, it's those. I mean, you don't have the g-forces and the danger, but right, you know, practically the same. And you can attach cameras. Yeah. Oh, to the car vehicles. And then, so then, sure. how yeah, soon till you're steering it, but you're actually looking it through the camera? It's on your RC car. You can have you can have your back to the track yeah. and race your car. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. Huh. Eventually, maybe that's where. It'll... Well, they've got they've got the goggles too. I mean, they're like the 3D flight goggles. They yeah. you put it on and you can fly a plane or or, or a quadcopter yeah. and see what's going on in real time. And yeah, the, the tech again, it's just amazing. And again, you you can do all this with your cell phone too. Sit there with your cell phone. Right, right, yeah, yeah. With your cell phone. Hmm. Yeah, that's what Traxxas did. They um, with their some of the radios they come out with. Um, uh, you can attach your iPhone to the bottom of it. Yeah, I've seen that before. Uh, Especially the kind of the real entry level ones, ones you see at Walmart. Oh. Where you, you know. Yeah, some of that, yeah. Same idea. Bluetooth. See, I think the, you know, with us compared to, for example, the mass retailers, that are, the cars and trucks that we race, they are considered to be hobby quality, which means that you know they are better built, and again, they're very component driven. If, if something breaks, it can be replaced. The ones that, when they put everything on the circuit board and something goes wrong, the whole circuit yeah, board's shot, yeah. and the car's basically done. Everything, ours are all components. You know, if the if the if the servo's out, just put a new servo. If the receiver's out, new receiver. It makes it so that the cars are repairable, and a lot of the parts are interchangeable. Um, yeah, so, well, yeah, you know, most of the motors and ESCs and everything that you know, you can take a, you can take a fifth scale. Well, you can take a tenth scale car and put a fifth scale motor in it. You know, it fly. You can't control it. But I mean, yeah. this is interchangeable. It's so. <laughs> great. Yeah, this is, you know, I grew up with, with one of those that was half the size, and I mean, if, I remember when a wing would break, but I don't, you know, I could have to try to glue it back on, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the technology is just amazing, going back to the 80s and 90s. Anything else? Anybody else have any questions, comments? All right, guys, well, thanks for your Appreciate research. it, yeah, thanks a bunch. Thanks I hope a bunch. that you get, it stays with you. It's a lifelong hobby, this thing is, it's amazing, it's a... Uh, the fathers and sons that they race together, you, you know, they just you can just see that they're, they're loving it. They're, the grand, the grandfathers and grandsons. Like, I can't tell you how much of a, we have a lot of grandfathers and grandsons. Yeah. And um, just a chance for them to bond. That really family, cool. yeah, yeah. That, that's that's your market. And that's great that you're smart that you're targeting that. Well, like I said, I think, it, I think it's, it's they're good people and it's fun to have them and and it's lucrative. Right. <laughs> so we all kind of win on that. Like I said, I just it's a. Um, the high-end guys kind of bother me sometimes because they are kind of highfalutin. They are a little 
harder to serve. Um, they they expect more, but you know, we try to provide that. But the new people, they just you know, they're just wonderful. They, man, this place is great. I love this. this is, I didn't know you guys were here. This is so cool. You know, yeah. uh, we we you know, kind of hits it home. That's why we're here. It's, it's fun. It makes as long as it's fun, we should do this. But it's not fun it's because we should do something else. So. Yeah, I agree with that. All right, guys. Well, thank you. I'll let you get on back to your school. Well, that's it for us, too. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah.